everybody's got their safe queen, but this is mine. It's a a first year 7600 carbine after they went from the 760s. And it had the Fleur de Lore checker still back then. And the first year had the white line spacers. It was 87 or 88. After that, the white line spacers were gone, which the white line is in the, the later version, 760s. I bought this gun in, I think it was 1988. And uh, it's the only one I've lugged since then. Showed a lot of bucks with it. I've changed... Uh, the Skinner peep, I had the Williams Skinner never made one until recently for it. So I've switched over to the Skinner peep, a lot ruggeder. And uh, I still use, a lot of people put a fiber optic. I still have the original uh, bead that comes on them. I paint it, I paint it with uh, fluorescent orange. Used to use model paint. Now it's, you can get the fingernail polish, so I just put that on there, and if it gets yanked off on a tree or something, I just put another coat on. Every year I touch it up bright, make a nice round bead. Uh, used to shoot with no aperture, and then Andy Larson at Skinner has made these Big Woods tracker models that they have no aperture in them. It's like a ghost ring. That's what you're using now. You can see that right on the... It's a big woods model Skinner peep. So anyways, you can see my fingerprints in this one are worn in. I'm left-handed, so that's from carrying it. The blue one's pretty well worn on this thing. I had uh, I had a gal. This was the biggest buck track I've ever seen. It was eight inches from the dew claws to the tips. So I had that put in there and this uh this scene here comes off a book that I read my grandfather gave me when I was about 10 years old. It was called How to Hunt Deer. And I always just loved that picture of that buck jumping through the woods uh, over a blowdown log or something there. So that's the history of that stuff. And uh, it's a well-oiled machine. It, you know, it just, there's no resistance to the slide on it. So it's just fast, light. And that's what I lug. This here I found, this is a, on a, a first year 760 in 300 Savage. I bought this from a buddy Joe Donito, and I bought this for my grandson. It's his first pump gun. He's big enough to carry one now. And they didn't make carbines in the 300 Savage, so I had it cut to 18 and a half for him put the Skinner peep on it and uh, it's a beautiful gun it's still just like brand new and uh, so anyways hopefully that'll last him a lifetime this um, this is an old 760 original pump from the well, this is a first year as well but uh, this is a, a 30 odd six the thing about this one, which is unusual, the serial number on this is 2404. And I, I researched a little bit, and it's the first year. It's, it's really like the 1004th one to come off the production line. And the unique thing about it, it has a tang safety. And uh, so that they, what they did was they blocked off the cross bolt. They just left it. They got it sealed on uh, on fire, and they put this tang safety, and it looks factory done to me. I took it apart. I took I took the stock off, and the parts all look like they're hand done. Like I believe it's probably a prototype. Gun gun manufacturers used to do that in the first year. They would take some and try to make some changes with it. And so, and this one too is in perfect shape. So if anybody out there has any ideas about, you know, if they've seen another one, I do know they made, I don't know if it was Marbles, or one of the companies made an aftermarket one, but this isn't it because it had a bigger piece of metal that you could do it yourself with a kit. This isn't that one. This is something different. So anyways, another nice gun. 
I had to dig back into the archives here now. We're getting back into the older pumps. This is a Model 14, Remington 14 made. They've started making them in 1912. And uh, so this was their first pump gun. It didn't have a, it didn't have a clip magazine. It's got a tube magazine, and that's why this tube is spiraled. The design was it so when you you push your shells in the ma magazine in the tube, they would they would rotate around so the tip of the bullet wouldn't be on the primer of the one behind it. Kind of a unique design. And uh, this one is particularly a really rare one. The carbines were rare anyways. But this one here has a, uh, they call a thumbnail safety. They try another thing, it was another experimental thing, I guess. So the, the thumbnail safety never caught on. I believe they only did it that one year. Puts the value at the gun is double. It's 100% value added with that. And again, they blocked the cross bolt, put this thumbnail on. And uh, these operated with a, the, re the bolt release is right in the bolt face. There's a button there, and you just push the button, and that releases it. They're very smooth, a very nice gun. This one's in uh, 35 Remington. Back then, when they come out with these, they didn't even have the model number on them. They, they had a 22 that was a Model 12 the same way. But they had a, a case head in the receiver of these, the 14s and also the 141s, and that told you the cartridge, you know, the caliber that the... So this here is kind of the next one. This is the 141, and this also is a carbine and 35 Remington. So they started making these 140, they discontinued the, the 14 in 1939, and then a year or two later, they came out with a 141. It was just kind of an upgraded version a little bit. Basically, the stock was different. The, the 14s had a straight grip stock. They went to a curve stock. And they went from a, the original one was round, and they called it a corn cob. This basically is the same. The, it's just slotted. It's a little different. And then they continued this on in the 760s. It was a different shape. And they always call that in the 760s, they call it a Tootsie Roll. They call these corn cob uh, four ends. And then they went, they decided calling them Tootsie Roll four ends. But the gun is basically the same. The action is the same, tube magazine, everything's the same about it. This one here is has got a factory peep on it which is kind of cool. They were all built, they all were drilled and tapped for this and they put those factory peeps on some of them. Other ones they didn't. It's pretty wood in that one too, huh? It's like a mm -hmm. tiger maple, but it's walnut. 